I'd like to talk about the three different types of time measurement that we have when we study special relativity. Now, in classical physics, Newtonian, Galilean physics, there's only one concept of time. Everyone agrees on time. It's a universal quantity. But if you've studied any relativity at all, the first thing you learn is that different observers measure time differently. So I want to take just a minute to think about the different ways that different people can measure time. And uh, in particular, I want to talk about differences in time, delta t. Delta t is the time between two events. So an event in relativity, as you recall, is something that happens at a particular place and time. So a firecracker explodes, or Abe Lincoln gives the Gettysburg Address, or something. Uh, some specific thing where we can label a position and a time for that event. Delta t, then, is a way of just finding the difference in time between two events. That's the well-defined thing. Then we don't have to worry about when year zero is or when I started my stopwatch. We're just looking at the difference in times between two events, and that'll help us to focus on a well-defined question. So, okay, in relativity, there are three ways of thinking about this, or well, it depends on how you define it, but there are three important concepts to talk about for time and relativity. The first one is coordinate time. Again, if you've studied some relativity, you know that there's a lot of care you need to take to synchronize crop, uh, clocks in a single inertial reference frame. If you have a set of clocks that are all at rest relative to one another, that may mean they're at rest relative to you, or it could mean they're moving at constant velocity. If you have a set of clocks that are all at rest relative to each other, they're in a single inertial reference frame, and there are procedures we won't talk about right now by which you can synchronize those clocks. So coordinate time is just a matter of saying, okay, whenever event A happens, you look right where it is, and you look at the clock sitting there in this synchronized inertial reference frame, because in principle you've got a clock at every location. You look at the nearest inertial reference frame synchronized clock, and you write down the time. That is the coordinate time of event A. And then when event B happens, maybe some totally different place, you look at the nearest inertial reference frame synchronized clock in that particular frame, and you write down the coordinate. You write down the time it reads, and that's coordinate time of event B. So the delta t, the difference in time between those two events, is just the t b minus t a. It's the difference in those two times. That's coordinate time, and it's all based on an inertial frame. The key thing, as you've seen if you've read anything about relativity, is that different inertial frames have different synchronization of clocks. And so different inertial frames will, in general, give different values of delta t. Cool. OK, that's the first type of time we talk about. The second type of time we talk about in relativity is proper time. And just to emphasize this, as other books do, proper here doesn't mean true or correct. What proper means is more like proprietary. Each observer has their own proper time. The, every observer measures time, uh, so it's the elapsed time for a given observer. So if I'm present at event A, and then I am also present at event B, then if I just note down the time on my watch at each one of those two events, the difference is the proper time. Uh, my, for me, for, as my observer, as an observer, the difference is my measured proper time between event A and event B. Uh, it could be a wristwatch, I could just be counting heartbeats if I'm really good at that. Whatever it is I use to count time in my own experience, that's what my proper time is. The key point here is that if I'm counting the proper time between two events, that means I have to specify some observer who was present at both events. It can't just be Hal and his friend Bob, it's got to be Hal at the beginning and the end. So up here, in general, you expect to have two different clocks at the different events, whereas down here, you expect that you, you have to have the same observer at both. The third type of time measurement in special relativity to talk about is the space-time interval. And this one is the only one that's unique because there are lots of different inertial coordinate frames. There are lots of different paths that observers could take from event A to event B. But the space-time interval is the only one of these things that is unique. The idea is if you can find an observer from whose perspective events A and B happen at the same place. That is, an observer who just experiences themselves sitting, sit, sitting still, and event A happens there, and then a bit later, event B happens there. That, observer is, that observer's measurement of time, their own proper time, is the unique space-time interval between those two. This is an important point, because this is an inertial observer who doesn't experience any motion, who doesn't feel any acceleration, they're just sitting still from their perspective, this inertial observer means that space-time interval is a type of coordinate time. It's one example of coordinate time. Because it's a single observer present at both events, 
that means that it's also an example of proper time. So the space-time interval is both a coordinate time and a proper time. All right. So we've now talked about all three types of time, and keeping those straight is really important as we study relativity.